este continente es el más injusto que hay. On this continent, the most unfair on the planet, Uruguay is the country that best distributes its wealth. That is an achievement. What isn't an achievement is, given the dimension of Uruguay and the resources we have, that we still have people living in poverty, and some in absolute poverty. This means we have to carry on fighting. Jose Mujica's government oversaw a major reduction in poverty in Uruguay at a time when the economy expanded. He considers improving the nation's energy provision as one of his major achievements. We increased social spending enormously, but it was possible because the economy improved. We had a fiscal policy that was based on this policy. Those who have more are those who pay more. It is here that Mujica is most uncompromising. Critics said that his government did not go far enough in consolidating economic growth, and across the region there were sectors that believed centre-left administrations like his would be replaced by conservative governments. Here is a class vision. The workers in the media are one thing. The owners of the media are people who see reality through an optic of their class that they belong to. And if I just said our fiscal policy is that those who have more have to pay more, of course they're in opposition. Nobody likes someone else's hand in their pocket. Governments aren't magicians. In politics, you have to choose who to favor. And of course, we tend to favor the marginalized majority. Y naturalmente nosotros tendemos a favorecer a esas mayorías más postergadas. During the military dictatorship of the 1970s in Uruguay, Mujica was imprisoned for well over a decade. Much of that was spent in solitary confinement. He's one of a generation of Latin American leaders who swapped radical political activism for high office. Nos fuimos desarrollando en aquella época we grew up at the time with another arsenal of ideas and proposals. Maybe now, after similar goals to back then, but reaching those via a different route. At that time, we denied or refused to see. Now there are a group of people in Latin America who, as young people, went through the unforeseen events of the 60s and 70s. Each is different, but now they are in government. They have learned a great deal. I'm sure they learnt with defeat, but they are now serving to bring the changes our society needs. It is his personal experience that leads to strong conviction over issues such as the Guantanamo Bay detention camp. Mujica's government offered asylum to prisoners from Guantanamo, a move that was resisted by some sectors in his home country. I belong to a world of people persecuted. I remember it like it was yesterday. I can't forget yesterday. It is terrible. It's not a jail. It's a kidnapping haven. If any government of the world did this in a small country, they would be destroyed. What the U.S. has done has no limit. They have people without trial, without lawyers, without accusations. It is a disgrace to humanity. It is a progressive cause to make a jail like that disappear. I was a social activist. I was jailed. Others don't know about this, and they are horrified. Mujica is just as passionate about trying to combat the drugs trade. He seemed frustrated that there's still resistance to fully implementing the legalization of marijuana in Uruguay. We're not in favor of addiction, neither of marijuana nor any drug. But there are at least 150,000 Uruguayans who smoke. We want to eliminate drug dealers from this market so users don't have to buy from dealers, so their vice is not a crime. It's the same as the prohibition laws in the United States. The U.S. banned alcohol, and Al Capone appeared, and worse. It wasn't just marijuana legalization that made headlines around the world, but so too did Mujica's lifestyle. In the context of the economic crisis in Europe, there are political parties who see Mujica as an example. What happened in Spain with Podemos is the triumph not of the left, but the triumph of the desire for dignity that people have. What they see in us with simplicity, not poverty, but with austerity, it surprises them because 
Governors stopped living like the majority in their countries and they lived like the minority, the most privileged minority. In these hyper-consumerist societies, too often political systems have become mixed with the phenomenon of corruption. This discredits political parties, the political system and people. Above all, it fosters skepticism. Nobody believes anything, and that is poison for a society. They told me about this at a conference. A sheikh whose son with a lot of money and an ability to spend it wanted my car. I laughed and let it pass. Then thinking about it, it would have been disloyal to some friends who put up the money for the car before I became president. Beyond the anecdote of his VW Beetle, Mojica has spoken eloquently at international forums and with other leaders about his vision of the need for a new world order. The West wants to impose its vision of democracy on countries that have other visions. This only multiplies conflict. We have to respect indigenous peoples, respect other religions, and other ways of living in the world. In order to live together, we must respect what is different. It seems the strong think that because they are strong, they have the right to impose their policies on others. It would serve us well to change that way of seeing the world. America's Now.